What's up everybody and welcome to part five of our Pacific Crossing series. Bear with me for a couple of seconds here because I have some really exciting announcements to make. Number one, we are gonna to go to the Annapolis Boat Show. We're gonna be at the show from the Friday, the 13th of October to the Sunday. We're gonna be down at the YouTube booth and our booth time on Friday is from 2 to 3.30. On Saturday, it is from midday to 1.30. And on Sunday, it is from 1 till 2.30. So we're there for an hour and a half each day. Come down, have a beer with us, hang out, let's talk about boats, whatever you guys wanna talk about. We're also gonna be hosting the International Cruises Awards at the show. I think that is sold out, but that's gonna be on the Friday night. But for the awards, we've actually been put forward for best YouTube episode. And that's gonna be that Nini Wahuni episode that we made about our friends getting dismasted in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. That episode and you guys have now raised $82,000 for that whole disaster. So that's up for nomination. I'll leave a link in the description below if you guys wanna vote for us on that one. We'd love to win that. We've also got a Patreon meetup coming up in LA. My good friend Marcos, I did a season of Below Deck with him. We've booked out his entire restaurant for our patrons. Um, the dinner is fully booked now, but we may be opening up the restaurant afterwards for drinks depending on how many numbers there are. Um, it's a crazy few months. Then I've got a thing called BravoCon November, that's in Las Vegas, that is fully booked out. But in December, there's the Sailing Odyssey Festival. And that's when a whole bunch of influencers, we've got Captain Glenn coming, Dan and Kika from Sailing Uma, Brady and Blue from Cruises Academy. We're all getting a catamaran each and we're sailing around the BVIs. I think there are still some um, cabins left. The price that you see there is per cabin and come hang out with us. It's a week long festival. That's gonna be in the middle of December. Again, I'll leave a link in the description below if you wanna check that out. Even Jamie is getting his own catamaran to sail around there. And the story is incredible because I am actually driving Parlay 2, which is Bob's new boat. Bob was the owner of Parlay. And now he's bought a new one. It's a 52 foot lagoon and I get to drive it for that week. I'm so excited for that. And then in February, once we finally arrive in New Zealand, we're gonna do a huge Patreon meetup. There's already a hundred people that have said they wanna to come to that. We're gonna to go to my home. It's gonna be incredible. Okay, I'm very excited. I, I wanna see as many of you guys as possible. The Annapolis show is an amazing time to be able to um, meet you guys. If you want $5 off every ticket that you buy at the Annapolis show, you can use the code 23 Parlay abs I'll leave that in the link in the description below and get a little discount. Come say hi, let's hang out. Super excited. All right, let's roll this episode. So I'm Colin, and this is the crew of Parley Revival. From hurricane damaged, to broken bulkheads, and getting struck by lightning not once, but twice, to being the strongest and fastest Lagoon 450 on the planet. We are now ready to embark on a 3,000 mile journey across the Pacific Ocean to French Polynesia, before continuing on with our circumnavigation. So subscribe to follow our journey around this beautiful planet. 20 years from now, you'll be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did. So what are you waiting for? So in the last episode, you saw us getting hit by squall after squall as we had well and truly entered the doldrums. We'd been at sea for two weeks straight, so we were having to keep a close eye on our fresh food supplies. Okay, so before we left Puerto Vallarta there, we just had so much going on with all the rigging and everything like that. So I intentionally kept completely out of the provisioning and food side of things and just left it up to these guys. So let's ask them how we're doing so far. We are day 14. One, we didn't get enough apples. All of a sudden, uh, eight crew on Parlay wanted an apple a day. <laughs> We lost a few oranges because we had some water go through the bilge. So what do you think is going to make the entire trip? Cabbage, onion, potato, maybe cucumber, bread. The bread in Mexico lasts like six, <laughs> six weeks. We don't know what's in it. But also, that, fish. We've had a lot of fish. We've only fished for a yeah. third of the time maybe because our freezer's been full. The freezer's off right now. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I 
What's this? Oh, yeah, I'm better than it looks. I am better than it looks. Guys, it's going to be okay. Funny, I'm better than it looks. <laughs> Today is Brittany's birthday. She's stoked. She's saying that there's no better place to have a birthday than out here in the middle of the ocean with this crew, so I'm really happy for her. Tell us about your cake. What is it? Red velvet cake with some weird icing that I have to improvise with. Can you be made, made in the slow cooker? Yep. Made in the slow Time. cooker. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you! Hip hip! Hip hip! Hip hip! Hip hip! Hip hip! Pacific Ocean Crossing Cake, one could ever ask for. Steve got Britt a nice bottle of Moe for her birthday, so she's gonna pop the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> Just turn on the ultra slow mo, 240 frames a second. Hopefully, we got it. Now we're at uh, one degree and 40 minutes of latitude and 128 degrees and 36 minutes of longitude west. So we are fast approaching the equator and there is tradition that dates back to centuries ago where you have a equatorial baptism. And so it's where we see if all of these guys who are at the moment polywogs are worthy of crossing the equatorial line to become shellbacks. So there's a initiation, a hazing involved, and then some offerings, and then the, the court of King Neptune will decide whether this lot are worthy or not. So I think that's going to happen in around 20 to 24 hours, and get ready. Morning everyone. I've been awake for a little while. I can't sleep. I'm too excited. This is one of the big days. This is us crossing the equator today. Everything's just sort of so far lined up perfectly for us to cross this afternoon. For a moment there it was looking like we were going to cross in the middle of the night, which would have been strange, but we would have just done it anyway because we've got to do this baptism. So this, I'm just going to check what the wind is forecasted to be doing for the rest of the day, it's saying exactly what we thought, it's three o'clock. The wind might pick up slightly, <coughs> that's good. There's a few things I want to prepare. I'm the only one that's crossed the equator before, I've done it three times. Um, so I will be King, King Neptune, the, the god of the seas, and hopefully we'll be turning seven polywogs into shellbacks this afternoon. Stay tuned! We're about 37 and a half miles away from our equator. Waypoint. Uh, if I go here, we have traveled a total of 1,965 nautical miles. So, for however this has worked out, it's almost going to be exactly 2,000 miles from Puerto Vallada when we cross the equator. So, some pretty cool round figures happening here. So, it was happening. We were finally about to cross from the northern to the southern hemispheres. That should be good. We got it started. Perfect. We were so excited and began preparing for the line crossing ceremony, including a crown and trident for King Neptune. Oh, the uniform! Oh boy, it's not looking good for us. But also all the polywogs had to dress up for the occasion as well. I'll wear them. This is something not a lot of people get to do in their lifetimes. So the boat was filled with excitement as we sailed closer and closer towards the equator. I know. Why would you do that? That's going to go on us. Uh, it's going on us anyway. Those are undies. Those are nut huggers. That's what Steven's going to wear. <laughs> I told him he has to wear it on his head or on his balls. One or the other. What are you going to give Steven as a face paint? A shark. <laughs> what? What? A shark. Oh, a shark. <laughs> I tried to say it in an Aussie accent. getting so close to the equator. Blue skies, nice breeze. 
this massive squirrel just comes through. So, getting tested right down to the equator. Okay, you're done. The things I go through for the sake of the boat. <laughs> It's for King Neptune. He looks like a shark now. He looks like a shark. Ready? As ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> Spider, an octopus, who knows? <laughs> Alright, Chelsea, No, it's an octopus. Ooh, ooh. Got these lovely men's underwear. Spider, if you will. Oh, yeah. Equator, here we come. We're half a mile away from the equator. Just our luck, it is rolly as hell out here. We've got three square meters of head still out. We're still doing two point something knots. The idea is to swim out here. Just trying to make it the least amount of gnarly as possible. It was an honor for me to dress up as King Neptune, just as my captain had done for me all those years ago. It was exciting to be able to share this experience with the crew, after a long and arduous sail here from Mexico. But as tradition goes, they were not going across without some form of punishment. First I had to make a truth serum, so that the crew would not lie when presented in front of the court of King Neptune for their sins. It turned out to be a disgusting concoction of anything I could get my hands on. So I was confident it would do the trick. Oh, no. Perfect. <laughs> that should get the truth out of them. Oh, that's a good idea. Why would you say that, Jamie? There was never going to be flour in there. That was for his hair. Way to go. Thanks. Thanks, bud. <laughs> Anything else you want to fuck us over with? Tell me what it looks like, Brent. What is she drawing? This is my starfish. <laughs> Did you just say, is that a starfish? Oh, no. Hey, that's better than the spider. <laughs> yeah! yeah, baby! Yeah! 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 <laughs> so what we have here are the food scraps that we've been keeping for the last few days. That stinks. We've been keeping for the last few days. Um, got some rotten eggs here, some flour, the truth serum which you just saw us mix up, and let the proceedings begin. Oh man. Four minutes and nine seconds. Let's go! Ooh, yeah, Vince! If anyone drowns, the Vince <laughs> jacket's sure right in the dinghy, just chuck it over. If someone lets go of the rope, thank <laughs> safety officer. Oh. <laughs> um, most excited about the shell back, but least excited about the slops bucket. So, you've all been summoned to the court of King Neptune. This is where you're going to be uh, held accountable for some of your sins. So the pollywogs were made to come up one by one into King Neptune's court, forced to drink the truth serum, before making a plea for their sins against the ocean. Polly! <laughs> Plead guilty or not guilty? You've been charged with working for several years on stinky, smoky, carbon-producing, shit-dumping super yachts. Do you plead guilty to this? Guilty. Guilty as charged. <laughs> <laughs> then comes the flower. Ready? And here comes the best part. Oh no, it's no. Not bucket. Jamie, your crime, crime, which I witnessed a couple years ago. <laughs> Spending the night on another catamaran, <laughs> wetting the bed, <laughs> and, then, and then hanging the bed sheets out the window, <laughs> and leaving without even telling this poor lass. Are you guilty? Yes. <laughs> okay, Vince, your crime. Being so seasick <laughs> that you couldn't even make it to the side of the boat and you threw up all in the cockpit right there. Are you guilty? No. No? Uh, no. It wasn't you? No. Who was it? <laughs> Probably one of the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
It was fun. Did that drink taste grosser than it was? Yeah, I, I might, I'm going to make a request to King Neptune to have a beer to wash that shit down. So, we bought Jamie dissolving swim trunks and they're slowly dissolving. And Colin's also wearing a pair. <laughs> guys, jump in! You're 0 0.006 miles from the equator! Here we go, 0.001. Can you see that? Zero, they're at the equator! We just crossed the equator! Yeah! Guys, this is wild. It was absolutely awesome that the crew got to swim across the equator behind Parlay. It was truly a once in a lifetime opportunity for some of the crew, and an accomplishment they can all be extremely proud of. We're in neutral right now, and the wind is just pushing us yeah. over the equator. We're at 0.003 in the southern hemisphere right now. What an incredible, incredible thing. So it was official. All seven polywogs had officially been inducted as trusty shellbacks. So we had Stephen, the chosen one, our Patreon from Canada, Vince from Bishop, California, Dave from Houston, Jamie from Yass, Australia, Katie from Anguilla in the Caribbean, Colleen from Philadelphia, and Britt from Toronto. All of them had sailed 2,000 miles on this trip from Mexico so far. Hey, what do you think, brother? Oh, I feel good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired as fuck. His legs feel good. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> Woo well, how about we throw Neptune in from the top? Woo! <laughs> Rough, baby. The reason why Jamie's shorts are falling apart is because they're dissolving shorts. <laughs> are they really? <laughs> yeah, that's it! <laughs> that's Those are dissolving <laughs> shorts, apparently. That's why his pants are coming apart. Okay, yeah. now you got it. Hey, my nut huggers aren't dissolving, are they? <laughs> Jamie. Jamie, dude, your pants. Yeah, no. Nah. Good thing you're wearing something underneath. <laughs> Best $30 ever. Well, we did it. After 2,000 miles, we went from the Northern Hemisphere to the Southern Hemisphere. But we also just spent a couple of hours going live to probably a lot of you guys. And it was just so fun to interact with, with the fans and, and feel that support and encouragement for what we're doing, you know, just it uh, cements the fact that we're doing something special here. Um, so I'm feeling very grateful right now for the for the situation, for the boat, but for the people that I'm doing it with as well. Thank you, Captain, man. Seriously, thank you for bringing us across the equator. Thank you for getting us to this point safely, and thank you for taking us to French Polynesia. None of us would I'll be here, yet. but none of us would <laughs> be anywhere close without you, without Parlay, without this dream. It's it's just no words to describe getting to be a part of this. You know, we're all from completely different places and walks of life, and we're all here together because of this guy right here. Honestly, it was really scary jumping into the Pacific Ocean when the swell was as big as it was. Um, but no, it was fun. I wouldn't want to be doing this with any other crew, and it's been an incredible journey so far. This is something that I'll never get a chance to do again, so. My advice to everybody is join Patreon. We're scared for it to end. Like, it's going by so fast, and I think it's gonna go by even faster now that we cross the equator, but we don't want it to ever end. It's like, we're so thankful for this. It's just the most amazing experience ever. I mean, you got more time to think about anything. All, all the issues in your life, all the issue in other people's life while you're out here. Um, and it really puts things into perspective, what's important and um, what, what you value, you know? So, yeah, it's been really special. One of the wildest things is for me, each day you sit out and you watch the back sugar scoops and you see the water flowing past and you're moving the whole house to a different country. I just want to, like, emphasize um camaraderie on this boat and the feeling of being and living in a community like we don't realize we're, we're moving through this ocean but it takes 
the effort of every single individual on this boat and the energy and the will to do so to move this boat along to French Polynesia all these miles. Yeah, it puts a, a smile in my heart. The next morning we had to do some investigating because the night before we did something a little bit silly which resulted in our solar panel being smashed. We didn't have the tension right on that reef so the sail was a little bit higher than it should have been. It should have been pulled down lower and that would have brought the boom up to the sail. We made a bit of a mistake there and as we were sheeting in the main none of us realized the boom was actually pulled all the way down onto the solar panel so we just heard a loud as the glass shattered above us. Right there where the boom was resting on the panel, cracked it all the way across. It's all kind of crunchy now, but it stayed together, so there's no little shards of glass popping out yet. But later when there's sun on here, because it's shaded by the boom, we can see if it's producing any power or not. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed it, please hit that subscribe button and tune in next week as we finally arrive in French Polynesia. We made it! And you'll find out how many days and hours it ended up taking us and the total number of hours we had to use the motor.